mums and dads of Great Britain. For years you've worked your fingers to the bone. You've cooked, you've cleaned, you've washed and ironed. You've paid for your little treasures to live in comfort and joy. But for many parents, it's a never-ending story. Their kids are work-shy, demanding and downright ungrateful sponges. You asked for something too? No, I don't like beans, you know I don't. You do like beans. Oh, get me spaghetti. Why do I need to work when my mum pays for everything? They depress me, Jobs, they depress me. I'm not a massive fan of responsibility. I don't want to move out yet because I'd rather spend money on clothes. The painful truth is that these parents only have themselves to blame. I can't be strict on anything, with anything, with anyone. My mum's like a doormat. You can literally walk all over it. Now these long-suffering parents have finally acknowledged enough is enough and it's time to take drastic action. It's pushed me to the brink. He needs to learn, obviously, to look after himself. He's got to. I guess it's my fault. They're kicking eight of the worst offending overgrown children out of home. There's the big wide words. Go out and sort it out. Having never lived independently or held down a proper job before, each week they will be challenged in the workplace by their parents. <laughs> I've got wet feet. I'm not catching new more on you for this. It is Johnny in bed. That's disgusting. To see if they can cut it in the real world as adults. Oh, it's almost took like a runny poo. Oh! <laughs> Will their parents' shock tactics be enough to finally bring their children kicking and screaming into adulthood? I slipped my dad! You're nothing. You're a dirty oh. animal. Why am I so stressed? Don't push it. Don't push it. You... Oh, my. Seriously, grow up. Yeah. Grow up. Or are they forever destined to remain young, dumb, and living off mum? <laughs> this molly-coddled mob have been living under one roof for ten days. Each week, the kid who proves themselves to be the most useless will be sent packing. The catch is, it's their very own parents who will be watching and deciding who's out. In a break from the rules, 24-year-old Orion was sent packing for proving too capable, and last week, 25-year-old Jay was booted out for being a useless team player. The six remaining survivors are... Rich kid, Doan. With your yeah. attitude, you wouldn't, you wouldn't work for me, to be honest with you. You wouldn't work for me. See you Call later, me. Bro. Tantrum queen, 18-year-old Danielle. You grow up, you silly little cow. Daddy's girl, Dina. People need to learn how to poo properly. Nanny's boy, Sean. I am catered for, pampered, weighted on hand and foot. Work shy, 25-year-old Nikki. I hate cleaning. Fuck it. And university dropout, 18-year-old Rachel. At university, I didn't clean any of my stuff. Hence, probably dropping out. I stank too much. And for the best of this bad bunch, there's one round-the-world trip up for grabs to whoever can prove they can cut it as an adult in the real world, working and living independently of their parents. Having never done a hard day's graft before, they've already been put to work. To do this job, they would have to pay me two grand a week. In the hotel trade. Oh, these men so angry. And the fashion industry. Quite comfy, actually. The but this week, things will get even tougher. I can't do it! When they're forced to work a day's labour on a farm. Busy! Getting up close and personal to their supper and literally shoveling shit. Making the shit! The shit smoking! But they're also going to be judged on their home life. And without mum and dad, it's proving difficult. I give up. <laughs> I need to go ring my family. I love them so Reluctant to clean up after themselves, they've turned on each other. Yeah, that she needs to shower. She needs to stop getting pissed. She needs to sort she of life out. And the house is becoming divided, with Nikki and Rachel on one side, and Doe and Dina and Sean on the other. It's the start of a new week, and the group have just five days to get their act together and impress their parents before one of them gets the boot. But a cloud of doom has descended over the house. Days of perpetual rows have started to take their toll. It's not a nice place to be when everyone's arguing. It's just all getting like out of hand and stupid now. And some know exactly where to point the finger. If Rachel goes, I think that everyone will get on. The house will be so peaceful, there'll be no arguments. And it's like Rachel's not in the house half the time because she just sits in a bedroom. She doesn't 
mix of everyone. But Rachel is fed up with being the brunt of all the criticism. I'm sick of everything in this house, the arguing. Everything. Well, I'm not doing anything with them. Yeah, I can't really be bothered. Agree. I can't even be bothered trying with them. Just want to get out. With the group unable to resolve their differences, small setbacks can cause big bust-ups. And a recurring problem is the final straw for Dina. That is disgusting. It's like fucking shit stays everywhere. Blech. That's disgusting. It's like diarrhea. And prime suspect Rachel is more concerned with changing the colour of her hair extensions than the toilet. If you do do shit in the toilet, clean your stains up because it's not on. OK? No. Thank you. I'll take them to appreciation and I'll sort myself out. Thank you. Because, you know, it's not good. Yeah, but it's not very unhygienic. You're not very hygienic. Yeah, but you're not, you're not hygienic, are you? No. You haven't had a shower for three days. They look at the colour of your feet. Okay. You need to have a wash. Stig. And put some trousers on. I'm getting in the shower. Why didn't you get a shower? Look at the colour of your feet. You'll get your hand. Oh. I've been on your hands for days. You have the same marks over you. You always wear fucking. Oh, do you know what? It's horrible. Ignore her. Yes, I'm doing. She's so unhygienic. She has the same stains on her body every single day. It's not on. I didn't realise she was my mum all of a sudden. She's drinking her true colours. Used to a life of luxury, 18-year-old Rachel has been treating the house like party central. Drinking like a fish, making a mess, and breaking everything in sight. But her worst crime is her aversion to showering and washing her own clothes. Dirty girl, dirty girl, you make me feel like a dirty girl. This place makes you go, Trampy. Her room always stinks of B.O. Every time I walk past her, B.O. I don't know why, she just makes me feel d dirty. When I'm eating my food, I can smell her, innit? And it's not nice. Sure. Yeah. But now Rachel is determined to prove to the others that she is not the dirty girl that they think she is and is attempting to do something she has never done before. Wash. My personal aim for today is to get all my washing done. And so this evening, I can have my first glass of wine. But knowing nothing about the art of laundry, Rachel calls for backup. Push that in okay. and put it out, yeah? 18-year-old Danielle only learned to use the washing machine three days ago and is still getting to grips with the basics. Is it white second first, then I do the colours after? I'm not too sure. God, I'm nervous. <laughs> Rachel may have 10 GCSEs and 4 A-levels, but when it comes to personal hygiene, she might as well be in nursery. And I haven't been singing too much because I've been using loads of perfume to cover the smell. But now it's just a bit like... Oh, my mum did my washing before now. She, she, she just did it all the time, really. My mum, she's always been like... You know, she gave up her career to do my washing. Like. Back home in Bedford, Rachel's parents have had enough of her filthy habits. She's disorganised, she's chaotic. I like living at home because my parents clean for me. She does her own thing rather than thinking about the bigger picture. They iron for me, they wash my clothes. And she's untidy. Oh, ever so slightly. She's just like a bomb's gone off at the moment. I clean up after Rachel because if I don't, it drives me crazy. Is there anything else you'd like me to wash? At university, I didn't clean any of my stuff. Hence, probably dropping out. I stank too much. She doesn't know how to operate a washing machine. So I do wake up and think, when is she going to do these things? But it might be sooner than Mum Suzanne thinks. <laughs> it's going. This is washing my clothes for me. Yeah. Jesus. I'm learning. I'm learning. This may not look like much, but for Rachel, the tide could be turning. The parents will be watching everything the kids do in search of signs that they are finally growing up. In three days, they will be set their third work assignment. But before then, they have to show they can improve themselves and the household. 17-year-old Dina is given the kitchen the once over. And uncharacteristically, work shy Nikki is checking out the job section. Let's see. Interested in helping medical research. Start off. I'd probably blow up as a balloon. How much is it? 
This Blackburn babe usually runs a mile at the mere thought of work and never helps at home. They depress my jobs, they depress me. They make me in tears. I don't like, I hate, I don't like working. Are you just lazy? <sighs> all in all, I've had 23 jobs and they've lasted like three days, sometimes a day, sometimes six hours. Probably give her everything that she wanted, not everything that she needed. My friends always say that, they're like, Nicky, for God's sake, where are you going to get a job? Well, why do we need a job? Well, I've created a monster, and yes, I will all man's up, it's my fault. But back in London, after only two minutes job hunting, she's given up. And she's not helping Dina's spring clean either. Put your fat feet on No, there. because you took the chair away from Don't me. Don't put your feet on there, I've just wiped the surface, you dickhead. Happy? I've just wiped the surface. I've got no... You're sweeping, I can't sit down. Despite there being lots of household chores to do, Nikki's still not lifting a finger. Nikki's 25 and she still relies on her mum. When I'm 25, I don't want to have to rely on my dad. I want to, like, but when I'm 25, I'd like to give things to my dad, not my dad keep giving things to me. And after 25 years, one thing Nikki has mastered is the perfect excuse. Everyone has a little break, but what I do, it always all helps pay. Meanwhile, the new Rachel is cleaning up nicely. She's put some lunch on and, for the first time ever, is hanging out her own clean clothes. Learning how to do washing and learning how to be cleaner as a person, it's not hard, you know, what you look, like, come on, like, it's not actually that hard, you know? And now it's time to see how that lunch is getting on. <laughs> Sadly, a lifetime's incompetence can't be reprogrammed in one day. I was only trying to make my lunch. <coughs> Set fire to the kitchen. Ah! It's the first time I made the effort for preparing lunch. What did you make? A chicken Kiev sandwich with tomatoes. <laughs> nice try, nice try, nice DIY. Maybe she's not ready to be the perfect housewife just yet. Now it's time for the other ladies in the house to do lunch, but while the menu isn't fancy, the conversation is making up for it. I thought we were outside George Bush's house, but we wasn't. Who's our president then? Georgia. We've got a president. We've got a prime minister, and that's Gordon Brown. So what's the difference between the president and prime minister? We are president. They are presidents. We have um, prime ministers. Who has presidents? It's just that who's um, what help runs the country. Prime minister. That sounds like a, a head teacher, doesn't it? Or is it because he's a head teacher? But like fair that. Yes, Danielle. Something like that. Doan is returning from hospital after having an operation on his nose that was scheduled before he came to the house. But having an impressive bandage doesn't necessarily win him any sympathy. Look at his face! Look at it, look at it. No, I'm only joking. Is this all? Are you okay? Well, I think it's a stick of bravery. You got a lollipop too, you know. <laughs> In order to drag their kids into adulthood, the parents have cut all financial ties. Instead, they have to manage their own limited budget. On day one, the kids decided to each contribute five pounds of their budget into a kitty to cover the basics. Not a bad idea for this lot. However, not everyone is paying up. This is how much we've got left in the kitty, and Rachel won't pay into it. Well, go and tell her. She has to because she's I did tell her and she's used she's stuff used from the kitchen. She's used the bread, she's using the floor, she's using the, all the milk. The products. Look at the milk. Go and tell her. I did tell her, but she was like, no. And I said, well, I'm going to the shop. That's her own fault. It's her own fault. She's used our bread and our butter. I'll tell her. Rachel? Yeah? Um, are you going to put a fiver into the kitty because you've used our butter, milk, and bread? Okay. I put two pounds forty in. Everyone has to put a fiver in, <coughs> so it's not fair for everyone else to put a fiver in and you, and you just to put two forty in. I know so, I might not be perfect at the moment, but I'm really trying my best. Yeah. Yeah, so you only have two pound forty out your budget. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
I don't see how that's fair for everyone else to put a fiver in. And it's not just Dina who's put out by Rachel's shortfall in the budget. I know that it's not good about the kitty, but I'm trying so hard in this house. Well, you're obviously not, because all you have to do is pay the money like everybody agreed, and then it's fine. But Sean, I'm trying. Try? Why you stop saying you're trying? If you're going to try, then pay the money you owe but to the house. It's not all about paying money, it's trying. So you're a thief? Then. Sean. Well, no, oh, that's what it is. She's taken without paying. The kitty's not a charity. It's an agreement we set up at the beginning and which everybody is stuck to. And now, all of a sudden, after, what, two weeks, you've decided that you're not going to pay into it. The point is, you owe money into that kitty. It's just what we all agreed on it. We even agreed on it formally in the house meeting. And now you're saying, no, I'm not going to give you the money. I never said that. I said tomorrow, OK? Why would tomorrow make a difference? Sean, you're not my dad, OK? Why would tomorrow make a difference? Myself. You're not my dad. Can you please get out of my bedroom? Why would tomorrow make a difference? Can you please get out of my bedroom, Sean? You wouldn't like it if I went through your stuff. Like you said, you know... I'm not going through your stuff. Please, why can you get... Th why would tomorrow make a difference? That's all I want to know. Because if you make me understand why you can't Sean, pay today, I've you can't pay tomorrow. I've got nothing to say to you. You're not my father. Please get out. I would hate to be your father. So thank God I'm not. And you'd be goddamn ashamed of your behaviour in this house. You're a thief and you're a disgrace to this entire house. It's just not fair because everybody's paid five pounds out of their own budget and she's getting off with it. They think I'm going to be amazing at budgeting, amazing at cleaning, amazing at this or the other. There was a reason I came in here and I think they're forgetting that. To escape the tension in the house, Dina, Danielle, Sean and Doan go to the fair. Leaving cash-strapped Nikki and Rachel with a house all to themselves. Except for a bottle of wine, that is. People are draining the life out of me. Rachel's had a rough night tonight. Sean's been... I know it's wrong to say it, but Sean's been bullying Rachel. No, he hasn't been bullying. He has. Sean and Doe and Dina, they've no, all been no, bullying no, 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 you. Yes, they have. They could have said it to you the last way and they didn't. You just can't win. We did invite Rachel and Nikki to come. Then you upset Rachel, that's why she never come. Her. You always upset her, you do. You need to stop bullying her. So far, so bad, but hopefully the fairground will cheer everyone up. Except Danielle, who, after a childhood incident, doesn't actually like fun fairs. I'm not going on because I get really scared. And I went on this one, this, when I was little, and I threw up afterwards because it goes really fast. <laughs> you going to go on it? No. Back home in Devon, Danielle would usually hide behind her mum rather than face her fears. And she's wimping out here too. Oh my God, it's so scary. Danielle has been so wrapped up in cotton wool by her mum that she's even terrified of the most simple things even talking to strangers. People scare me. No, you'll be fine. Just say, would you like any still sparkling water? Well, to everyone. I'm not doing it no more. And now our fairground ride is proving one step too far. Go on then, be a day at them. Not that one, fuck that. It feels like I'm flying. You can shut your eyes and it'll be over with 30 seconds. I mean, it's not like she's got a broken nose. And then you could actually say, yeah, I achieved it. I've done something I never, ever thought I would actually ever do. Yeah, it's not going to happen, Dylan. Holy shit. Back at the house, good time girls Nikki and Rachel have spent the last two hours drowning their sorrows. <laughs> They've sniffed out all the booze and managed to get well and truly sozzled. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Back at the fair, Danielle is still standing and she's finally mustered the guts to give the ride a go. Right, can I just sit on it and see what I feel like? It's because I'm terrified. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm terrified. No, no, don't shut me in because it's not funny yet. Because I shit myself on these and I really feel sick on these. And I will probably puke up on your ride.
He was not bad, was he? Yeah. <laughs> I feel drunk. Oi. Yeah. Can we go on it again? <laughs> I feel really happy, really like. Wow, I just done something. Just funny to see Danielle on that ride. That was the highlight, I reckon. Even though I felt like I was going to break my neck, I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> I think my hair, like, is falling out. <laughs> Overcoming her fear is a significant turnaround for Danielle. Let's hope she can keep it up. Is it closed now? Yeah. Oh, I bet you want to... You're evil! <laughs> At the house, Good Time Girls Rachel and Nikki have made it upstairs to bed, but the others don't have a key. Nikki! <laughs> Nikki! In their comatose state, the girls don't hear a thing. Probably looking out the window laughing to each other, the fucking immature pricks. <laughs> no, they're just sozzled. Eventually, a member of the film crew lets them in. Tomorrow, the parents will set the third work placement, so that leaves just one day for the kids to prove to their parents that they can live like adults in their home life. And with Rachel still not paying into the kitty, she's treading on thin ice. I'm determined to find some money. Every penny helps. Well, I don't have a purse at the moment, so my money's like scattered everywhere. So I think, you know, it could be on the floor, it could be in drawers, it could be... <laughs> to be honest, this place is like a Pandora's box, it could be anywhere. Having scoured her room for every penny, Rachel finally gives her meagre offering. Yeah. I've managed to get together a little bit more money, so now I've got, I think it's 454, 40. Yeah. I know it's not good enough, but I've just been trying to, like... Huh? <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. I've <coughs> but it's too little too late for 17-year-old Dina. She hasn't had enough money last week to pay for the fine because she was buying alcohol. This week she hadn't had enough money to pay for the fine because of alcohol. She just buys alcohol every week. And now Rachel's partner in crime, work shy Nikki, is in trouble too. Nikki better clean that room. Last night she was getting pissed in here and she's made a right mess of that front room. She leaves cigarette butts, run two cigarette butts on the table, on the table where we eat. And you shouldn't even be Using seen. it like an ashtray. How have some people been brought up? Doan decides to tackle the mess head on, but his diplomatic skills leave little to be desired. Nick, you're going to clean your mess up in the front room? Yeah, I'm going to be doing that later, why? Well, so I think it's disgusting, yeah? I'd rather it use... wasn't just me. What, the cigarette butts on the table? That wasn't me. Who put cigarettes on? I don't know. So you didn't put them cigarettes Don't, I'll butts. clean it up, chill. I'm asking you a fucking question. Oh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm arguing. I said I'm Well, you need to stop jumping a gun, because I'm not in a fucking mood this morning. I'm asking you a question. No, I said I'll clean it up. Can we drop it? Ugh. It's put me there. Shit, it really has. Really bad. This has been here. All that I've done is clean. I'm not spending my life cleaning. But Nikki and the others are about to get a lesson in what hard work is all about. Each week, one parent organises a day of proper work designed to force their kids into the mature throes of adulthood. As an extra incentive to persuade them to fly the nest, whichever kid is judged to have grown up the most will win a round-the-world trip. And now it's the turn of Nikki's mum, Roz, to set the job. Roz has been employed every working day since she was 16 and is keen for the kids to understand the value of hard graft. She's decided that a day of manual labour on a farm is just the ticket. Basically, it's the hardest work I can think of um, that they'd be able to do. I've got a very strong work ethic. You need to work in order to, to get things and in order to achieve self-fulfilment, if you will. There are some I think will find it difficult, and Nikki being one of them. This lot are used to designer shops, pamper parlours and parental slavery. Dad, Dad, wake up. Hello? Hello, am I on loudspeaker? Is that? It's me, your mother, I'm on loudspeaker. Hello, Mum. The task is a farm task. Oh, no! Oh, my God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! It's going to be really hard work. I want to see you all. Oh. Everybody get in the hands dirty. All right. Good luck. Love you. 
it's 7 a.m. and the group have been brought into the heart of Hampshire to the Newlands family farm. Whilst most farmers are out milking by now, our lot are still fixing their faces. They're evil. Sheep are evil and they've all got hidden, hidden agendas. Part of being an adult is not only working hard but also providing for others. Today's work challenge will show the group the harsh reality of how they're connected. They'll have to care for animals, prepare food, and then finally cook in the farm's restaurant for 50 customers. You're fucking kidding me. For some of these spoilt kids, it's their first time on a farm, let alone working on one. Oh my god, it's freezing! Hey! Oh, oh it's got oh, shit all oh, over oh, it! Even getting into their gear is beyond most of them. <laughs> it's going to keep you warm. <laughs> so with their parents watching everything they do, they all have to be on their very best behaviour. Right, morning everyone. My name's Ian. Welcome to Newlands. Uh, just a couple of quick health and safety things. We're working with big, heavy, dangerous machinery. We're working with dangerous animals. So absolutely no alcohol. Here we go. This is a good start. <laughs> this work placement has barely started and Rachel's already been busted. <laughs> We've got three bottles of wine, two cans of lager. If you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. I'm not sure that was quite the answer he was looking for. None of our staff ever bring any alcohol to work. We're working with big, heavy, dangerous machinery. We're working with dangerous animals. We absolutely cannot have any alcohol. Take note of that and we'll get on fine. Labouring on a farm is back-breaking work and any mistakes can cost the business valuable money. In order to get all the jobs done, they have been split into two groups. Rachel, Danielle and Sean will be working with chickens and cattle whilst Nikki, Doan and Dina get the pleasure of the pigs. In the chicken coop, they're getting stuck in straight away, boxing them up for slaughter. Quick as you can, Sean, and then there's a chance of escaping. They're always running away. 18-year-old Rachel tries her own way of bonding with the poor cluckers. That's it. It doesn't seem to work. Okay, you. Ow! Oh, Two! And Danielle's only just grasping some basic facts of life and death. There we go. I'm not eating animal again because now I know they're going to be killed. Oh, bless them. Yes, bless them indeed. Across the farm, Doe and Dina and Nikki are rounding up the pigs for their injections. No, eh? Hey. Yes, I have. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> They have just one hour to collect 60 of the porkers. Right. It's not that bad, girls. Yeah. I've got pig shit in my mouth. Oh, maybe it is. Come on, let's get down. We eat all day. Is that coming in? You're getting in next. But Nikki's having none of it. I can't do it, I can't Nick, do it. I don't care if it's too Nick, you can't do it. Come on, Nick. I can't do it. It's come on, Nick. Nicky's last job lasted four hours. This one's looking like less than four minutes. My heart's going ten to a dozen. It feels so tight. Luckily, Dina takes the initiative. Hi. Say hello to the pig. <laughs> As she carries the torch, 25-year-old Nikki is starting to get suspiciously ill. I feel the cold, my chest is killing me. And now I'm, I'm feeling faint now. I know I've got wet feet. I'm not catching any more on you for this. Right. They only have half an hour to collect the rest of the pigs. And in Nikki's delicate state, it's not looking likely. Go, pig! Pig! <laughs> Across the farm, the others are flying ahead. They've boxed up all their chickens and are now mucking out. Oh, Jesus Christ, the smell! Oh, right, you can go. Well done. 
Oh, is this is what you call grime. Look at that, I've got a blister already. I've got workers' hands. First time for everything. Back with the pigs, and after a miraculous recovery, Nikki has finally decided to get her hands dirty. I'm about to go in and catch a pig. But how will she cope with these cute little piggies? They're not bad, do they? Ever heard of a killer pig? Oh my god! Go on, Nick, just get on your knee! I can't have a bath in me! Just get, in, get your hands in there, let go, Thank get in there. Ah! Just slam the pig down, girl! Come on, get me out, get me out! Get me out! Go on, Nick! No, get me out! Nicky, no, I can't do it! Go on, just get at least one try, come on, girl! I can't, no, I'm scared in there, I can't do it! Okay, come on, then. Out, I can't do it! It bit me! The thing bit me! Across the farm at Snowbed of Roses, these cows produce two tons of dung every day, and it's this lot's job to muck it out. Big day to the bottom as well. Yeah. Much to Danielle's obvious delight. The cows, oh my god. They won't attack me, will they? I'm really scared. Danielle is completely out of her depth, and even the cows seem to know it. What's it doing? Stop me! This experience is supposed to build confidence. I can throw up. No, honestly. But it's breaking Danielle down. Side. <laughs> Danielle's only been working for two hours, and the raging bulls have pushed her to the brink. I need to sit down. I need a drink. I need to wash my hands. Oh no. Back with the pigs, it's gone from very bad to much worse. Some of them have escaped and are legging it off the farm premises. Come on, let's go and catch some piggies! This could prove devastating for the farm. Lost pigs means lost time and money. Come on, Nikki! I can't touch, I can't do it. While Dino runs around like a headless chicken, Nikki's just adding to the chaos. Oh, I'm sinking! No, I'm sinking someone out of me, I'm sinking. I'm stuck. I'm stuck! But Doan's busying himself doing what he's supposed to do, so it's up to Dina to pull her out. Hey. Don't pull me backwards, I'll fall backwards. Give me a hand. Oh. So that was ah. easy. Ah. I'm a welly. Ah. <laughs> With the parents scrutinising today's events, yet more time wasting won't win them any gold stars. At the cow shed, at least this lot are getting the job done. Kind of. I'm doing fantastic. But not without a good old moan. Oh, the white thing. Sticks bad. That's it. Oh no, that is poo. I'll cut the strings. And in particular, Sean. He can't let the day's graph go without a good whinge. No, I feel sick. Don't know why, but it's alright. I think I might throw up. I think I just overworked myself with the brush. <laughs> Got a headache as well. And a stomach ache. <laughs> oh, ickle sausage. And at the pigs, Nikki's now been stuck in the mud for 10 minutes. Right, stand up. I can't stop. Right, lay on your back and roll down the hill. Are you taking the <laughs> piss? I am not rolling oh. this shit. Leave, leave, leave forward. No, wait, you don't leave. need it. Get off because I'm, I'm thinking. What, what are you leading back? Because I've got you on. Oh. You're stuck. I'm, I can't get off. Come on, come. <laughs> First of all, these pants are too small, so I can't stand up and I'm sinking. That's right, blame it on your pants. And oh, then... no, look at my legs. I'm really sore. This stinks. And I can't move. Can someone please help me? With half his pig still on the run, farmer Gren is at his wit's end. They're totally useless. I don't know where you've got them from. <laughs> I should put them back. Dana! The sooner you take them off my hands, the better. Look, guys, you've made a right balls up of that. I can tell you that now. Or a pig's ear of it. The noise. You've frightened half the bloody pigs away already. We've still got pigs to pick up. Just well, get your act together. Use it, yeah. But with Nikki out of the mud, it's now Dina's chance to create havoc. Excuse yeah. me. Can you help me put this boot on? Because Good grief, I'm not your bloody mother. 
No, you're my friend. Back home in Chester, Dina has her dad wrapped around her little finger. Now she's trying her luck with Farmer Gren. No, I've got to my heel there, it's like four did there. Friend. What the hell have you got on your feet there? Lift your foot up a minute. Right, no, push it down. Good grief. Go on. Too much bloody clothes on there. Yeah! But with Dina now fully dressed, Nikki's back to square one. Oh, just leave her there. Come on, where we go? Go. Yeah. I'm stuck again. Go. We can't leave her. She's our team. Being stuck in the mud for a second time has finally pushed Nikki over the edge. I'm serious. I want to go. I quit. No, Nick. I quit. I'm not doing it. I quit. We all need to work together, right? I'm not ended up in Nick, hospital for this. Nick, calm that. down, right? Look, no one, no one wants to do this. We all I don't have care. to do it. I'm, I'm not working here. No, I want to Nick. go back to the house. Nick, don't I don't Nick. care. I'm going to go back. We all need to work together. Come on. We can't move in this stuff and I'm full of a cold. And Please, I'm not, we just try I'm one more time. I'm not feeling so good. Nick, I'm don't cry. I'm ill. Nick, I don't cry, do right? We'll have one more go. One more go. No, I can't. Please, I'm too ill. You don't understand how ill I feel. After a full 20 minutes of persuasion, Nikki finally bows to peer pressure. Well, I'm going to continue. I have to because I don't want to let them down. I'm meant to be a group and all, and a team. Nikki may be staying, but at least the pigs were able to make a run for it. But it hasn't all been bad. Their first morning's hard graft may have knocked some sense into them. I never eat meat and stuff like that, and I'd never thought I'd touch a pig in my life or anything. And I can't believe I've done that. I actually can't believe I've done that. These are, these are pretty grimy, and the fingernails. Not a fan of dirty fingernails. Pet hate of mine. Um, but it's foreign life, isn't it? It does make me appreciate people what do do this kind of job. But before, I thought, oh, it's a farmer. What a boring life, but it must take a lot of early mornings and hard work keep a farm running, so it makes me appreciate a lot more than I did. If they thought this morning was hard, well, just wait. They're about to get a very gruesome lesson in how their food actually gets from pasture to plate. I won't even look. come on. I can't look. It's a scene from, like, it's like a scary movie. Oh. Nothing else but... This is Dina's worst nightmare. I'm actually shaking. Petrified spot here. Sean, Rachel, and Danielle will be carving up a cow, and Nikki, Doan, and Dina will be dicing up a little piggy. <laughs> Dina couldn't get any further from her cushy shopaholic life in Chester. <laughs> What's your feet? You don't. Oh God. <laughs> God, just one hit. Come on, one hit. <laughs> God, please, just one shot, please. Come on. Just hold one hand and just one shot. Get in there. Come on. Just hold, hold it properly. Hold the knife properly so it don't come out your head. Oh! Overcoming her worst fear, she manages to handle the cleaver. <laughs> you like that, don't you? No. Before I was touching the pigs because I thought they were the cute little pigs and now they're dead. And I wouldn't like to be dead hung upside down with some flesh of my meat and eating it. Disgusting. <laughs> it's time for the kids to start butchering the slabs of meat ready for cooking later on. It's six hours into the shift and workshine Nikki would usually be out of the door kicking and screaming by now, but she's stuck at it. I know what lamb is now, I know how to look for lamb. Not lamb, um, whatever this is. It's pork, mate. And kitchen novice Danielle has found her niche as a master butcher, carving her rump perfectly. That's looking good, that's looking like a steak my dad would buy. Yeah, I really did enjoy it, mate. It sounds really strange and I didn't think I'd enjoy it. But I actually really did enjoy it. It was really good. It was actually, like, fun. Having worked the fields and butchered their meat, now they're going to be tested on the very thing they do worst, cooking. I can't cook. I can't even cook toss. Don't do anything in the kitchen, really. Just live off the soup. I love it. I can't see myself at this point cooking and making a drink. It's the final leg of the day, the kitchen.
Now the groups will have to turn the farm's carved up carcasses into tasty pies, and it's against the clock. It's head chef Dan's job to knock them into shape. We've got 40 guests arriving at around half four, and we need to cook 16 pies for them. But our standards are extremely high. We haven't got a lot of time to do it, so it's got to be hard work, get it right first time, okay? Remember that there are real customers expecting their pies on time, so any dithering could cost them the competition. Yeah, go and get, is there a sieve? I don't know what's yeah. a sieve. A sieve's like with the things with all holes in it. Just getting stressed because of time. <laughs> it's been such a long day. Not for the first time today, an inexperienced Danielle is getting intimidated, this time by onions. What can I let happen? Oh. Danielle has only cooked one proper meal in her entire life. I don't know what onions are going to look like. You probably know what burnt looks like. I think there's something wrong with the cooker. But not the cook, obviously. With time ticking away, this is their last chance to impress the parents. The pork kitchen is running with military precision. Dicing the veg, braising the meat, and rolling the pastry. The beef kitchen, on the other hand, is chaos. Danielle is burning the meat. This is getting really stuck. And Rachel's right back to her old ways. I'm a messy person, I'm not going to deny it. It's hard. Where's your pastry? Is it rolled out, yeah? Yeah. You've rolled out all your pastry? No, that needs to be done now, I think. Not having you rolling out on the surface. No, that needs that to be pattern. cleaned. Get it clean, get it rolled out. The pork kitchen are steaming ahead, getting their pies into the oven just as the restaurant is filling up with hungry customers. Little do they know what's going on behind the scenes. Huh? Do you think it's looking okay? Yeah, that's cool. At the end of the day, they're homemade pies, so they're not meant to be perfect, are they? Chef Dan might have something to say about that. There's no way that that's is getting enough. served to one of my customers. Get it. Okay, look at it. It's horrible. It's a mess, all right? Sort it out. Okay. Right one. Dan's damning comments have done nothing for Danielle's fragile sensibility. I can't even roll pastry out. And Sean's not helping that much either. Those big ones are really good. I didn't even do that. With Danielle's confidence knocked yet again, she's had enough. No, I just feel like, because I'm not very good at it, I'm letting you show them down. Danielle, Danielle, if you're trying your best, there's nothing to let anyone down. I'm pretty apprehensive that these pies are going to get cooked now, I must say, so they really do need to step it up a gear. At the moment, we're doing really badly, but I'm just trying not to give up hope. And, like, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings. It seems it is, as Nikki, Dina and Doan deliver their pies to a relieved and hungry restaurant. So nice. This is quite good, so we're okay at the moment. I'm just glad this other team's managed to get their pies ready because I need to serve something to these, these people. I need to keep them happy somehow. With the beef kitchen's pies nowhere near ready to serve, Dan has no choice but to call time. Okay, guys, the deadline has passed now. I'm really disappointed. Your time management's just not been up to scratch. Sorry, guys. No, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm like this right now. I don't think I'm ever going to be like her. But despite being told to stop, Rachel's not ready to throw in the towel just yet. Guys, you don't give up hope. Come on, it's not over. Come on, it's not over. The sketch that smile, the sketch that smile, I just fucking like smiling. Seriously, I'm sorry, Mom. Fuck me. Seriously, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. But the mother of all pep talks doesn't change the fact that their pies are a half-burnt, half-raw, inedible mess. Shouldn't be that colour, should it? No way. At this point, I admit that they are currently a disaster. After all that effort, the beef kitchen pies are fit for only one thing. Rest in peace, my friend. <laughs> I have cooked only very basic stuff and that's, most of that's been in the house here. Um, yeah, it hasn't all gone exactly to plan. It's the
the end of week three and D-Day. The time has come for the parents to play judge and jury to their precious offspring. They're about to watch the footage of the week to decide which of their little urchins deserves the boot. Each parent is looking for at least a glimmer of hope that their precious offspring has changed their ways. With one kid about to be eliminated, the parents soon highlight their little darling's good points. Oh God, just relax, just don't think about it. Put it, just slice it. Dina's dad, Darren, is proud as punch of his princess. Oh, I'm so amazed with Dina. Oh, I'm so... Yeah, she that... said she said I was going to be proud of her. Is Dina... So is that the same so Dina proud. as in, yeah, as in really, first week in the whole really, time? I would not never, touch a piece of raw meat. Yeah, never. For her to do something like that, that's just amazing. And Dawn has been staggered by her son Doan's progress. I've got pig shit in my mouth. Doan, not once has he moaned or complained on that at all. You know, he's out the girls trying to get him out of the mud. He's not getting stressed, he's keeping his calm. Yeah. Normally, he's, you would have seen Doan like... Re oh, he did really well, know. you know. Even Sean's grandma, Esther, doesn't have a bad word to say. Look at that, I've got a blister already. I've got workers' hands. I think he's learned a great deal in every task he's done. As you've heard him say, he got blisters, which he, I don't think he's ever known how to hold a brush, never mind brush the floor. In my eyes, I'm very proud of what he's done today. But for some of the parents, it's been difficult to watch. And Rachel's mum, Suzanne, is feeling let down. Are you going to pull fibre into the kitty because you have used all and milk and bread? Fibre two hands forty regards to her contributing towards the budget for the house. I am disappointed. It's not being fair that she's not putting in and she's still eating the food. She's not taking that size seriously. Nikki's terrible tantrum is all too familiar to Mum Rosalind. Yeah. Oh, I quit. I want to go. I quit. Nick, oh, don't I'm cry. Ill. I don't care anymore because well, they're listen. giving me stuff but I can't move round in. I'm Please, too ill. Do you not understand how ill I feel? And for the first time, it's caused a rift amongst the parents. It wasn't for the other two. I think she'd have walked. She was. She was going. She, she probably would have done. She yeah. Was, no. No. She probably would have done. I won't make excuses for him. But it, to her credit, she did pull herself back. You can't keep on um, having one of the group, two of the group, whatever, um, carrying, yeah. carrying them and saying, "Come on, come on! You've got to do it for us. You've got to do it for yourself." They've got to start thinking for themselves. So, after much discussion, the parents have decided the group consisting of Sean, Rachel and Danielle has been shortlisted to leave. Now the parents are faced with the problem of which of these three is the most useless and who should be given the boot. We've got three bottles of wine, two carrots of lager. <laughs> if you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. 18-year-old Rachel's farm slip-up has shocked Doan's mum, Dawn. Oh, it's absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah, I question, um, I got question mark. You know, why? for a teenager to carry alcohol around with her in the morning, there's got to be an underlying She probably problem. had, I mean, I don't know, but she probably didn't realise that she had the alcohol in the bag. She's always, my daughter carries a bag around everywhere she goes if she's going up the road. I said, what are you taking your big bag? Because... It's, a, it's an image thing with her. It says, oh, well, I look slim. I've got a big bag, you know. So with her, and it probably didn't click with her, that she had the alcohol in her bag. And if that was Doan, I'd want to go straight down there and pull him to one side and ask him what the fuck is going on. And Danielle's feeble attempt at cooking hasn't gone unnoticed. I just don't know what to do. OK, right. Those big ones are really good. I didn't even do that. Hard when you're completely crap at something. Danielle, she's very weak, um, or she comes across as being very weak and timid at times. As soon as Danielle can't do something, that's it. Her confidence gone, flat, gone, and you could see that clearly on there. She you know, felt as when she, she was felt she was letting them down, them. couldn't do it, um, and that's a shame. And I and I that hurts me to see that. It's now time for the final decision. I don't even know if I want to vote because it's just too difficult. It's difficult. I do understand it's difficult, but we do have to make a decision. <sighs> After much discussion, the parents have finally made up their minds. They must now head to the house to deliver their verdict. Rachel, Sean and Danielle are the ones left to face the music. 
With all the arguments this week, the parents want the kids to finally have an adult discussion about their differences. So the question is, how have things gone this week? People don't pull away in the house. Somebody will clean up, and then the next day somebody will come along and just completely disregard it, make a huge mess, and you know, and then not take any responsibility for it. Like you keep saying people, people, people. Who? people. You know, be honest, yeah. Sean. Be honest with us and be honest with yourselves. We want to know. Well, I will be who? honest. I feel horrible saying it because obviously you're sitting right there. But if I'm honest, I don't think Rachel pulls her weight around the house. She only does it when she absolutely has to. And then a lot of the time, she just doesn't bother. And like, she does tend to drink a lot, like every day. I don't know. <laughs> Rachel. I've been trying so hard this week. Danielle, would you like to say... Yeah, Danielle, you, you're being very quiet. Um, um, can you actually, if you have been involved or you've been a witness, I mean, can you um, put... Um, it always feels like there's tension yeah. in the house. But, um, Is it with certain people? <sighs> oh, I like... You can be honest. Be honest. Be honest. I've got a mat. People always have a go at Rachel. That's how I feel anyway. I'm amazed that she hasn't walked out of this house. Well, I've been called a sly, a thief, um, a, a, a something, something slut, I'm filthy, dirty, and that's why I've been dealing with since who I've been in this called, house. Who called you a slut? Joe said it last week when he was having a massive go at me. There's been, I'll say it, bullying going on in this house. I think you're awful the way they're all bickering and mm -hmm. it's horrible. It is horrible because it, it wasn't like shaking this just first. listening to you two having a go. It's quite frightening. So I got on very well with Rachel at the start. I mean, we were really good friends. Exactly, so what went wrong? And then slowly I started to realise that she wasn't respecting the house. That, I'll be honest, I know that must hurt you. <laughs> no, you're it. right, you're right. But who will be going home today and lose out on the prize of a round-the-world trip and the chance to prove that they're ready to become an adult? The person that's going home this week is... Rachel. You're a little shitbag. Rachel wanted to prove to her mum that she could clean up her act, but this chance is now over. Come here, baby. She's such a manipulator. Can I help you pack? Yeah, I tried my best this week. And that's all I could have done. You know, I focused on washing, fixing things. I, that's all I could have done. And I mean, I'm leaving having, having learned something, so... There's just time before Rachel leaves for the parents to sneak in one last bit of advice. It's not like we constantly criticise her. But she... Yeah. should show you don't, because you shouldn't well, we do don't You're at all. all in the house together. There's not going to be that twosome, is there, with Mickey and Rachel? Yeah. So I think things in the house might calm down a bit. Life is not a bed of roses, and that you 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 have got to play the game a bit and be diplomatic with your folk. And I know it is difficult. I mean, it is incredibly difficult when you, you meet people who are the most rude and horrible. Downstairs, Doa, Nikki, and Dina still await the decision. What did you say when she said that? Out of here. Come on. I think it's time for a party. Don't talk. That's not even funny. I'm not laughing at you, Nicky. I'm laughing at Dale. It's a celebration time, mate. Three cups. Draw the glass. Celebrate. There's nothing left in it. Celebrate. Rachel's partner in crime, Nicky, can't even bear to be in the same room as the others. And Doan's made it quite clear to Nicky who he wants out next. I'm not fucking happy. The door went to me. You know, now Rachel's gone. You're next. Fuck off, I hate them all.
Celebration time, mate. Come on. <laughs> just see him downstairs. I hate them all. And Dolls like, oh, you're next, Nikki. Dolls a thug. It's time for Rachel to leave the house and the new life she didn't quite succeed in. It's now up to Nikki to carry the flag for them both. I can't believe she's gone. I'm so lonely in that room. <laughs> so lonely. I want Nikki to win. I just want Nikki to win because she's true. She's been through a lot in her time. And I hope she doesn't let people undermine her, belittle her, bully her, get the better of her. And I hope she doesn't fall into the same traps that were laid out for me. Everybody in there was cheering when she went. That was bang out of order. I've got no freaking heart, none of them. Danielle's comforted me and I really appreciate that. But Doe, Doe hates me. I can tell he hates me. Next time, the kids turn market traders for the day. Brand new store open today, guys. Bargains today. You all right, ladies? Can I interest you? Can we interest you in anything else on now? One pound for all them. And there are still challenges to overcome in the kitchen. Uh, it's watery. That looks like guts or something. This pizza looks minging. And Doan and Nikki are at war. So why are you always insist on causing arguments? I'm not causing arguments. You started this again. That next cracking episode is next Sunday at nine here on three. To catch up on adult season, just go online to bbc.co.uk slash iPlayer. This star already. I've got workers' hands. I think he's learned a great deal in every task he's done. As you've heard him say, he got blisters, which he, I don't think he's ever known how to hold a brush, never mind brush the floor. In my eyes, I'm very proud of what he's done today. But for some of the parents, it's been difficult to watch. And Rachel's mum, Suzanne, is feeling let down. Are you going to pull five rings to Kitty because you refuse to have butter, milk and bread? In regards to her contributing towards the budget for the house, I am disappointed. It's not being fair that she's not putting in and she's still eating the food. She's not taking that side seriously. Nikki's terrible tantrum is all too familiar to Mum Rosalind. I quit. I want to go. I quit. Right. Nick, I'm don't cry. Ill. I don't care anymore because well, they're listen. giving me stuff but I can't move round in. I'm Please, too ill. Do you not understand how ill I feel? And for the first time, it's caused a rift amongst the parents. If it wasn't for the other two, I think she'd have walked, she, she was going She, she probably would have done. She yeah, was, no, no, she probably would have done. I won't make excuses for it, but it, to her credit, she did pull herself back. You can't keep on um, having one of the group, two of the group, whatever, um, carrying, yeah. carrying them and saying, come on, come on, you've got to do it for us, you've got to do it for yourself. They've got to start thinking for themselves. So, after much discussion, the parents have decided the group consisting of Sean, Rachel and Danielle has been shortlisted to leave. Now the parents are faced with the problem of which of these three is the most useless and who should be given the boot. We've got three bottles of wine, two carrots of lager. If you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. 18-year-old Rachel's farm slip-up has shocked Doan's mum, Dawn. Oh, it's absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah, I question, um, I got a question mark. You know... Why? For a teenager to carry alcohol around with her in the morning, there's got to be an underlying problem. She probably problem. had... I mean, I don't know. But she probably didn't realise that she had the alcohol in the bag. She's always... My daughter carries a bag around everywhere she goes if she's going up the road. I said, what are you taking your big bag? Because... It's, a, it's an image thing with her. It says, oh, well, I look slim. I've got a big bag, you know. So with her, and it probably didn't click with her, that she had the alcohol in her bag. And if that was Doan, I'd want to go straight down there and pull him to one side and ask him what the fuck is going on. And Danielle's feeble attempt at cooking hasn't gone unnoticed. I just don't know what to do. OK, right. Those big ones are really good. I didn't even do that. Hard when you're completely crap at something. Danielle, she's very weak, um, or she comes across as being very weak and timid at times. And because of alcohol, she just buys alcohol every week. 
And now Rachel's partner in crime, work shy Nikki, is in trouble too. Nikki better clean that room. Last night she was getting pissed in here and she's made a right mess of that front room. She leaves cigarette butts, run two cigarette butts on the table, on the table where we eat. And you shouldn't even be Using saying... it like an ashtray. How have some people been brought up? Doan decides to tackle the mess head on, but his diplomatic skills leave little to be desired. Nick, you're going to clean your mess up in the front room? Yeah, I'm going to be doing that later, why? Well, so I think it's disgusting, yeah? I'd rather it wasn't use... just me. What, the cigarette butts on the table? That wasn't me. Who put cigarettes on? I don't know. So you didn't put them cigarettes Don't, I'll butts. clean it up, chill. I'm, I'm asking you a fucking question. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm arguing. I said I was Well, you need to stop jumping a gun, because I'm not in a fucking mood this morning. I'm asking you a question. Don't, I said I'll clean it up. Can we drop it? <laughs> Put me there. Shit, it really has. Really bad. This has been here. All that I've done is clean. I'm not spending my life cleaning. But Nikki and the others are about to get a lesson in what hard work is all about. Each week, one parent organises a day of proper work designed to force their kids into the mature throes of adulthood. As an extra incentive to persuade them to fly the nest, whichever kid is judged to have grown up the most will win a round the world trip. And now it's the turn of Nikki's mum, Roz, to set the job. Roz has been employed every working day since she was 16 and is keen for the kids to understand the value of hard graft. She's decided that a day of manual labour on a farm is just the ticket. Basically, it's the hardest work I can think of um, that they'd be able to do. I've got a very strong work ethic. You need to work in order to, to get things and in order to achieve self-fulfilment, if you will. There are some I think will find it difficult, and Nikki being one of them. This lot are used to designer shops, pamper parlours, and parental slavery. Dad? Dad? Wake up. Hello? Hello, am I on loudspeaker? Is that? It's me, your mother. I'm on loudspeaker. <laughs> Hello, Mum! The task is a farm task. Oh, no! <laughs> Oh. Everybody get in the hands dirty. All right. Good luck. Love you. It's 7am and the group have been brought into the heart of Hampshire to the Newlands family farm. Whilst most farmers are out milking by now, our lot are still fixing their faces. They're evil. Sheep are evil. And cars have started to take their toll. It's not a nice place to be when everyone's arguing. It's just all getting like out of hand and stupid now and some know exactly where to point the finger. If Rachel goes, I think that everyone will get on. The house will be so peaceful, there'll be no arguments. And it's like Rachel's not in the house half the time because she just sits in a bedroom. She doesn't mix with everyone. But Rachel is fed up with being the brunt of all the criticism. I'm sick of everything in this house, the arguing, everything. Well, I'm not doing anything with them. Yeah, I, I can't be bothered. I can't even be bothered trying with them. Go. With the group unable to resolve their differences, small setbacks can cause big bust-ups. And a recurring problem is the final straw for Dina. That is disgusting. It's like fucking shit stays everywhere. Blech. That's disgusting. It's like diarrhea. And prime suspect Rachel is more concerned with changing the colour of her hair extensions than the toilet. If you do do shit in the toilet, clean your stains up because it's not on... Okay. No. Thank you. I'll take them to appreciation and I'll sort myself out. Thank you. Because, you know, it's not good. Yeah, but it's not very unhygienic. You're not very yeah, hygienic. It's disgusting. Yeah, but you're not, you're not hygienic, are you? No. You haven't had a shower for three days. They look at the colour of your feet. Okay. You need to have a wash. Stig. And put some trousers on. <laughs> I'm getting in the shower. Why didn't you get a shower? Look at the colour of your feet. Look at your hands. Oh. I've been on your hands for days. You have the same marks over you. Yeah, you always wear fucking. Oh, do you know what? It's horrible. Ignore her. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. She's so unhygienic. She has the same stains on her body every single day. It's not on. I didn't realise she was my mum all of a sudden. She's drinking over say her true colours. 
Used to a life of luxury, 18-year-old Rachel has been treating the house like Party Central. Drinking like a fish, making a mess, and breaking everything in sight. But her worst crime is her aversion to showering and washing her own clothes. This place makes you go, Trampy. Her room always stinks of B.O. Every time I walk past her, B.O. I don't know why, she just makes me feel dirty. When I'm eating my food, I can smell her, innit? And it's not nice. Sure. Yeah. Like but now Rachel is determined to prove to the others that she is not the dirty girl that they think she is and is attempting to do something she has never done before. Wash. My personal aim for today is to get all my washing done and so this evening I can have my first glass of wine. But knowing nothing about the art of laundry, Rachel calls far so bad, but hopefully the fairground will cheer everyone up. Except Danielle, who after a childhood incident doesn't actually like fun fairs. I'm not going on because I get really scared. And I went on this one, this, when I was little, and I threw up afterwards because it goes really fast. <laughs> Are you going to go on it? No. Back home in Devon, Danielle would usually hide behind her mum rather than face her fears. And she's wimping out here too. Oh my god, it's so scary. Danielle has been so wrapped up in cotton wool by her mum that she's even terrified of the most simple things even talking to strangers. People scare me. No, you'll be fine. Doctors say, would you like any still sparkling water? Well, to everyone. I'm not doing it anymore. And now a fairground ride is proving one step too far. Uh, Go on then, be a day of them. Not that one, fuck that. It feels like I'm flying. You can shut your eyes and it'll be over within 30 seconds. I mean, it's not like she's got a broken nose. And then you could actually say, yeah, I achieved it. I've done something I never, ever thought I would actually ever do. Yeah, it's not going to happen, darling. Holy shit. Back at the house, good time girls Nikki and Rachel have spent the last two hours drowning their sorrows. They've sniffed out all the booze and managed to get well and truly sozzled. Oh, come here. <laughs> you have to fucking fall, me up. Back at the fair, Danielle is still standing and she's finally mustered the guts to give the ride a go. Right, can I just sit on it and see what I feel like? It's because I'm terrified. It's not going to go with I'm it. terrified. Just, no, don't no, shut me in because it's not funny yet. Because I shit myself on these and I really feel sick on these. And I will probably puke up on your ride. Sorry, I'll keep... Just funny to see Danielle on that ride. That was the highlight, I reckon. Even though I felt like I was going to break my neck, I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> I think my hair, like, is a bra, mate. Yeah, never. For her to do something like that, that's just amazing. And Dawn has been staggered by her son Doan's progress. I've got pig shit in my mouth. Don't, not once, has he moaned or complained on that at all. You know, he's out the girls trying to get him out of the mud. He's not getting stressed, he's keeping his calm. Yeah. Normally, he's, you would have seen him do like... Really, oh, he did really well, no, you know. Even Sean's grandma, Esther, doesn't have a bad word to say. Look at that, I've got a blister already. I've got workers' hands. I think he's learned a great deal in every task he's done. As you heard him say, he got blisters, which he... I don't think he's ever known how to hold a brush, never mind brush the floor. In my eyes, I'm very proud of what he's done today. But for some of the parents, it's been difficult to watch. And Rachel's mum, Suzanne, is feeling let down. Are you going to pull five rings to Kitty because you'll have used our butter, milk and bread? Can I put two hands forty in? 
regards to her contributing towards the budget for the house. I am disappointed. It's not being fair that she's not putting in and she's still eating the food. She's not taking that side seriously. Nikki's terrible tantrum is all too familiar to Mum Rosalind. Hey. I quit. I want to go. I quit. Nick, I'm don't cry. I'm ill. I don't care anymore because well, they're listen. giving me stuff but I can't move round in. I'm Please, too ill. Do you not understand how ill I feel? And for the first time, it's caused a rift amongst the parents. If it wasn't for the other two, I think she'd have walked. She, she was going She, she probably would have done. She yeah, no, no, she probably would have done. I won't make excuses for him, but it, to her credit, she did pull herself back. You can't keep on um, having one of the group, two of the group, whatever, um, carrying, the carrying them and saying, come on, come on, you've got to do it for us, you've got to do it for yourself. They've got to start thinking for themselves. So, after much discussion, the parents have decided the group consisting of Sean, Rachel and Danielle has been shortlisted to leave. Now the parents are faced with the problem of which of these three is the most useless and who should be given the boot. We've got three bottles of wine, two carrots of lager. If you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. 18-year-old Rachel's farm slip-up has shocked Doan's mum, Dawn. Oh, it's absolutely gobsmacked. Yeah, I question, um, I got a question mark. You know... Why? For a teenager to carry alcohol around with her in the morning, there's got to be an underlying problem. She probably problem. had... I mean, I don't know. But she probably didn't realise that she had the alcohol in the bag. She's always... My daughter carries a bag around everywhere she goes if she's going up the road. I said, what are you taking your big bag? Because... It's, a, it's an image thing with her. It says, oh, well, I look slim. I've got a big bag, you know. So with her, and it probably didn't click with her, that she had the alcohol. I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking? Someone out of me, I'm thinking. No! No! I'm stuck. I'm stuck! But Doan's busying himself doing what he's supposed to do. So it's up to Dina to pull her out. Hey. Don't pull the battles or fall battles. Give me a hand. I oh, thought that was oh, easy. Ah! I'm a welly! With the parents scrutinising today's events, yet more time wasting won't win them any gold stars. At the cowshed, at least this lot are getting the job done. Kind of. I'm doing fantastic. But not without a good old moan. Oh, that might be. It's bad. Oh, it. oh no, that is poo! I'll cut the strings. And in particular, Sean. He can't let the day's graph go without a good whinge. No, I feel sick. I don't know why, but it's all right. I think I might throw up. I think I just overworked myself with the brush. I've got a headache as well. I have a stomach ache. Oh, ickle sausage. And at the pigs, Nikki's now been stuck in the mud for 10 minutes. Right, stand up. I can't stop right, up. Lay on your back and roll down the hill. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> I am not rolling oh. this shit. Lay, lay, lay forward. No, lay forward. Lay Get off because I'm, I'm thinking. What, what are you leaning back? Because I've got you on. Oh. It's dark. I'm, I can't get up. Come on, come. <laughs> First of all, these pants are too small, so I can't stand up and I'm sinking. That's right, blame it on your pants. And then, oh, look at my legs! I'm really sore! This stinks. And I can't move. Can someone please help me? With half his pigs still on the run, farmer Gren is at his wit's end. They're totally useless. I don't know where you've got them from. <laughs> I should put them back. Dana! No! The sooner you take them off my hands, the better. Look, guys, you've made a right balls up of that. I can tell you that now. Or a pig's ear of it! The noise. You've frightened half the bloody pigs away already. We still got pigs to pick up. Just well, get your act together. You say, yeah. But with Nikki out of the mud, it's now Dina's chance to create havoc. Excuse yeah. me. Try Can you help me put this it. boot on? Because yeah. grief, I'm not your bloody mother. No, you're my friend. Back home in Chester, Dina has her dad wrapped round her little finger. Now she's trying her luck with Farmer Gren. No, but it's my heel legs. That's folded there. What the hell you got on your feet, Dad? Lift your foot up a minute. Right, now push it down. Good grief. Go on. 
Roz has been employed every working day since she was 16 and is keen for the kids to understand the value of hard graft. She's decided that a day of manual labour on a farm is just the ticket. Basically, it's the hardest work I can think of um, that they'd be able to do. I've got a very strong work ethic. You need to work in order to, to get things and in order to achieve self-fulfilment, if you will. There are some I think will find it difficult and Nikki being one of them. This lot are used to designer shops, pamper parlours and parental slavery. Dan? Dan! Wake up. Hello? Hello, am I on loudspeaker? Is that? It's me, your mother. I'm on loudspeaker. <laughs> Hello, Mum! The task is a farm task. Oh, no! 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 Really hard work. I want to see you all. Oh. Everybody get in the hands dirty. All right. Good luck. Love you! It's 7am and the group have been brought into the heart of Hampshire to the Newlands family farm. Whilst most farmers are out milking by now, our lot are still fixing their faces. They're evil. Sheep are evil and they've all got hidden, hidden agendas. Part of being an adult is not only working hard but also providing for others. Today's work challenge will show the group the harsh reality of how they're connected. They'll have to care for animals, prepare food, and then finally cook in the farm's restaurant for 50 customers. You're fucking killing me. For some of these spoilt kids, it's their first time on a farm, let alone working on one. Oh my god, it's freezing! Hey! Oh, oh it's got <laughs> shit all over it! Even getting into their gear is beyond most of them. Oh. <laughs> it's going to keep you warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with their parents watching everything they do, they all have to be on their very best behaviour. Right, morning everyone. My name's Ian. Welcome to Newlands. Uh, just a couple of quick health and safety things. We're working with big, heavy, dangerous machinery. We're working with dangerous animals. So absolutely no alcohol. Here we go. This is a good start. <laughs> this work placement has barely started and Rachel's already been busted. <laughs> We've got three bottles of wine, two cans of lager. If you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. I'm not sure that was quite... 17-year-old Dina is given the kitchen the once-over. And uncharacteristically, work shy Nikki is checking out the job section. Let's see. Interested in helping medical research. Sod off. <laughs> I'd probably blow up as a balloon. But how much is it? This Blackburn babe usually runs a mile at the mere thought of work and never helps at home. They depress my jobs, they depress me. They make me in tears. I don't like I hate I don't like working. You just lazy. <sighs> All in all, I've had 23 jobs, and they've lasted about like, three days, sometimes a day, sometimes six hours. Probably give her everything that she wanted, not everything that she needed. My friends always say that, they're like, Nick it, for God's sake, where are you going to get a job? Well, why do we need a job? Well, I've created a monster, and yes, I will all man's up, it's my fault. But back in London, after only two minutes job hunting, she's given up, and she's not helping Dina's spring clean either. No, there. because you took the chair away from Don't me. Don't put your feet on there. I've just wiped the surface, you dickhead. Happy? I've just wiped the surface. I've got no... You're sleeping, I can't sit down. Despite there being lots of household chores to do, Nikki's still not lifting a finger. Nikki's 25 and she still relies on her mum. When I'm 25, I don't want to have to rely on my dad. I want to, like, when I'm 25, I'd like to give things to my dad, not my dad keep giving things to me. And after 25 years, one thing Nikki has mastered is the perfect excuse. Everyone has a little break, but what I do, it always all helps pay. Meanwhile, the new Rachel is cleaning up nicely. She's put some lunch on, and for the first time ever, is hanging out her own clean clothes. Learning how to do washing and learning how to be cleaner as a person, it's not hard, you know, what you look, like, come on, like, it's not actually that hard, you know? 
Now it's time to see how that lunch is getting on. Sadly, a lifetime's incompetence can't be reprogrammed in one day. I was only trying to make my lunch. Lunch. What did you make? A chicken Kiev sandwich with tomatoes. <laughs> nice try, nice try, nice DIY. Maybe she's not ready to be the perfect housewife just yet. Now it's time for the other ladies in the house to do lunch, but while the menu isn't fancy, the conversation is making up for it. I thought we were outside George Bush's house, but it wasn't. <laughs> she sounds like she's having fun. Can we go on it again? <laughs> I feel really happy, really like, wow, I just done something. Oh. Just funny to see Danielle on that ride. That was the highlight, I reckon. Even though I felt like I was going to break my neck, I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> I think my hair, like, is falling out. Overcoming her fear is a significant turnaround for Danielle. Let's hope she can keep it up. Is it closed now? Yeah. Oh, I bet you're... You're evil! <laughs> At the house, good time girls Rachel and Nikki have made it upstairs to bed, but the others don't have a key. Nikki! Nikki! In their comatose state, the girls don't hear a thing. Probably looking out the window laughing to each other, fucking immature pricks. <laughs> no, they're just sozzled. Eventually, a member of the film crew lets them in. Tomorrow, the parents will set the third work placement, so that leaves just one day for the kids to prove to their parents that they can live like adults in their home life. And with Rachel still not paying into the kitty, she's treading on thin ice. I'm determined to find some money. Every penny helps. Well, I don't have a purse at the moment, so my money's, like, scattered everywhere. So I think, you know, it could be on the floor, it could be in drawers, it could be... <laughs> to be honest, this place is like Pandora's box, it could be anywhere. Having scoured her room for every penny, Rachel finally gives her meager offering. Dina, I've managed to get together a little bit more money. So now I've got, I think it's 454, 40. Yeah. I know it's not good enough, but I've been trying to like... Huh? <coughs> Thank you. But it's too little, too late for 17-year-old Dina. She hasn't had enough money last week to pay for the fine because she was buying alcohol. This week she hasn't had enough money to pay for the fine because of alcohol. She just buys alcohol every week. And now Rachel's partner in crime, work shy Nikki, is in trouble too. Nikki better clean. Prepare food. And then finally cook in the farm's restaurant for 50 customers. Fucking For some of these spoilt kids, it's their first time on a farm, let alone working on one. Oh my god, it's freezing! Hey! Oh, oh it's got <laughs> shit all over it! Even getting into their gear is beyond most of them. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna keep you warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 So, with their parents watching everything they do, they all have to be on their very best behaviour. Right, morning everyone. My name's Ian. Welcome to Newlands. Uh, just a couple of quick health and safety things. We're working with big, heavy, dangerous machinery. We're working with dangerous animals. So, absolutely no alcohol. 
Here we go. This is a good start. <laughs> this work placement has barely started and Rachel's already been busted. <laughs> We've got three bottles of wine, two cans of lager. If you knew you were doing a hard day's work, why did you bring the alcohol? I'm going to try and show you that I can have a couple of glasses of wine and be at the job and be on form today. I'm not sure that was quite the answer he was looking for. None of our staff ever bring any alcohol to work. We're working with big, heavy, dangerous machinery. We're working with dangerous animals. We absolutely cannot have any alcohol. Take note of that and we'll get on fine. Labouring on a farm is back-breaking work and any mistakes can cost the business valuable money. In order to get all the jobs done, they have been split into two groups. Rachel, Danielle and Sean will be working with chickens and cattle, whilst Nikki, Doan and Dina get the pleasure of the pigs. In the chicken coop, they're getting stuck in straight away, boxing them up for slaughter. Quick if you can, Sean, and then there's less chance of them escaping. They're all running away. 18-year-old Rachel tries her own way of bonding with the poor cluckers. It doesn't seem to work. Okay, you. And Danielle's only just grasping some basic facts of life and death. There we go. I'm not eating animal game because now I know they're going to be killed. Oh, bless them. Yes, bless them indeed. Across the farm, Doe and Dina and Nikki are rounding up the pigs for their injections. No way. Eh? Yes, I have. Hey, hey. <laughs> We have just one hour to collect 60 of the porkers. Right. It's not that bad, girls. Yes, this molly coddled mob have been living under one roof for 10 days. Each week, the kid who proves themselves to be the most useless will be sent packing. The catch is, it's their very own parents who will be watching and deciding who's out. In a break from the rules, 24-year-old Orion was sent packing for proving too capable, and last week, 25-year-old Jay was booted out for being a useless team player. The six remaining survivors are... Rich kid, Doan. With your yeah. attitude, you wouldn't, you wouldn't work for me, to be honest with you. You wouldn't work for me. Stay like Call me. Bruv. Tantrum queen, 18-year-old Danielle. Grow up, you silly little cow! Daddy's girl, Dina. People need to learn how to poo. Properly. Nanny's boy, Sean. I am catered for, pampered, weighted on hand and foot. Work shy 25 year old Nikki. I hate cleaning. Fuck it. And university dropout 18 year old Rachel. At university, I didn't clean any of my stuff, hence, probably dropping out. I stank too much. And for the best of this bad bunch, there's one round the world trip up for grabs to whoever can prove they can cut it as an adult in the real world, working and living independently of their parents. Having never done a hard day's graft before, they've already been put to work. To do this job, they would have to pay me two grand a week. In the hotel trade. Oh, he's making so angry. And the fashion industry. Quite comfy, actually. But this week, things will get even tougher. I can't do it! When they're forced to work a day's labour on a farm. Business! Getting up close and personal to their supper and literally shoveling shit. The shit. The shit but they're also going to be judged on their home life. And without mum and dad, it's proving difficult. I give up. <laughs> I need to go ring my family. I love them so much. Reluctant to clean up after themselves, they've turned on each other. Yeah, that, she needs to shower. She needs to stop getting pissed. She needs to sort she her life out. And the house is becoming divided, with Nikki and Rachel on one side, and Doe and Dina and Sean on the other. It's the start of a new week, and the group have just five days to get their act together and impress their parents before one of them gets the boot. But a cloud of doom has descended over the house. Days of perpetual rows have started to take their toll. It's not a nice place to be when everyone's arguing. It's just all getting like out of hand and stupid now and some know exactly where to point the finger. If Rachel goes, I think that everyone will get on. The house will be so peaceful, there'll be no arguments. And it's like Rachel's not in the house half the time because she just sits in a bedroom. She doesn't 
mix of everything. Dan's damning comments have done nothing for Danielle's fragile sensibility. I can't even roll pastry out. And Sean's not helping that much either. Those big ones are really good. I didn't even do them. With Danielle's confidence knocked yet again, she's had enough. No, I just feel like, because I'm not very good at it, I'm letting you shut them down. Danielle, Danielle, if you're trying your best, there's nothing to let anyone down. I'm pretty apprehensive that these pies are going to get cooked now, I must say, so they really do need to step it up a gear. At the moment, we're doing really badly, but I'm just trying not to give up hope and, like, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings. It seems it is, as Nikki, Dina and Doan deliver their pies to a relieved and hungry restaurant. So nice. This is quite good, so we're okay at the moment. I'm just glad this other team's managed to get their pies ready because I need to serve something to these, these people. I need to keep them happy somehow. With the beef kitchen's pies nowhere near ready to serve, Dan has no choice but to call time. Hey guys, the deadline has passed now. I'm really disappointed. Your time management's just not been up to scratch. Sorry, guys. I feel like I'm like this right now. I don't think I'm ever going to be like her. But despite being told to stop, Rachel's not ready to throw in the towel just yet. Guys, you don't give up hope. Come on, it's not over. Come on, it's not over. The sketch that small. The sketch that small. I just fucking smiling. Seriously, I'm sorry, so Mum. Fuck me. Seriously, we can do this. Yeah. We can do this. We can do this. But the mother of all pep talks doesn't change the fact that their pies are a half-burnt, half-raw, inedible mess. Shouldn't be that colour, should it? No way. At this point, I admit that they are currently a disaster. After all that effort, the beef kitchen pies are fit for only one thing. Rest in peace, my friend. <laughs> I have cooked only very basic stuff, and that's most of that's been in the house here. Um, yeah, it hasn't all gone exactly to plan. It's the end of week three and D Day. The time has come for the parents to play judge and jury to their precious offspring. They're about to watch the footage of the week to decide which of their little urchins deserves the boot. Each parent is looking for at least a glimmer of hope that their precious offspring has changed their I'm sorry, Mum, sir, but fuck me! Seriously, we can do this! Yeah. We can do this! We can do this! But the mother of all pep talks doesn't change the fact that their pies are a half-burnt, half-raw, inedible mess. Shouldn't be that colour, should it? No way. At this point, I admit that they are currently a disaster. After all that effort, the beef kitchen pies are fit for only one thing. Rest in peace, my friend. <laughs> I have cooked only very basic stuff, and that's most of that's been in the house here. Um, yeah, it hasn't all gone exactly to plan. It's the end of week three and D-Day. The time has come for the parents to play judge and jury to their precious offspring. They're about to watch the footage of the week to decide which of their little urchins deserves the boot. Each parent is looking for at least a glimmer of hope that their precious offspring has changed their ways. With one kid about to be eliminated, the parents soon highlight their little darling's good points. Go on, just relax, just don't think about it. Just put it, just slice it. Dina's dad, Darren, is proud as punch of his princess. Oh, I'm so amazed with Dina. Oh, I'm so... Yeah, she said she said I was going to be proud of her. Is I Dina... Is that the same so Dina proud. as in, yeah, as in first really, week in the hotel? Really, that would not never, touch a piece of raw meat. Yeah, never. For her to do something like that, that's just amazing. And Dawn has been staggered by her son Doan's progress. I've got pig shit in my mouth. Doan, not once has he moaned or complained on that at all. 
you know, he's out the girls trying to get him out of the mud. He's not getting stressed, he's keeping his calm. Yeah. Normally, he's, you would have seen him do like... Really, oh, he did really well for me. You know. Even Sean's grandma, Esther, doesn't have a bad word to say. Look at that, I've got a blister already. I've got workers' hands. I think he's learned a great deal in every task he's done. As you heard him say, he got blisters, which he, I don't think he's ever known how to hold a brush, never mind brush the floor. In my eyes, I'm very proud of what he's done today. But for some of the parents, it's been difficult to watch. And Rachel's mum, Suzanne, is feeling let down. Are you going to pull five rings for Kitty because you've used our butter, milk and bread? Can I put two hands for you? regards to her contributing towards the budget for the house. I am disappointed. It's not being fair that she's not putting in and she's still eating the food. She's not taking that side seriously. Nikki's terrible tantrum is all too familiar to Mum Rosalind. Hey. I quit. I want to go. I quit. Nick, I'm don't cry. Ill. I don't care anymore because well, they're listen. giving me stuff but I can't move round in. I'm 